All right. So, oh, a question that uh, is uh, near and dear to me, mm. and uh, that uh, builds on what we've been discussing. And, and let me just preface my question with a little information. So, since really the 1940s, Haitian Vodou has received a lot of attention from uh, scholars. Uh, like Jacques Roumain and many others, Milo Marcelin in the 1950s, and and they have done so much work in the textualization of songs, you know, the writing down of songs and the translation of songs into French or later into English. And so, really, since then, probably a dozen creolists uh, have produced really voluminous materials on Vodou and in Creole and so you know for me it's like we're in the renaissance of the textual development of Creole uh, or Vodou sources really and so for a Creolist like me it's been a very special time to be alive and, and then with 2008 we had uh, Max Beauvoir's book 1750 uh, you know, or so songs in, a, in an enormous volume and then a a significant collection called La Pouille Guinée, which is a traditional prayer that uh, many Vodou communities recite prior to ceremonies. And so I look at this just with a kind of awestruck uh, contentment and uh, joy to see this rich tradition in all of its subtlety and depth with all the spirit names well known now, all the rites, the 21 rites, if you take the Asoboué tradition well known, all the spirits of each rite categorized by Beauvoir, all the songs. I mean, you know, it's like uh, we have all the evidence we need uh, to show the world that this is a full-fledged world religion, second to none, uh, and, you know, empowered in, in, the, in a way that any other religion is empowered, a textual religion. So what I'd like to ask of you is, what about uh, Nigerian religion, and what about other uh, let's say African diaspora religions have they been empowered in in the same way by scholars and voodooists and practitioners writing down the tradition do, do you know has any country uh, been able to keep up with Haiti in this regard um, interestingly I just um, and also your translations uh, too, mm -hmm. yes, um, which I, I do have on my iPad. Mm -hmm. um, but interestingly, I just discovered from my brother, who happens to live in Accra, and I was talking with him, and he was telling me, and I, I haven't done enough research to, to be very specific here, but he said that in Togo, interestingly enough, um, <coughs> the indigenous belief system, which is very similar to Yoruba, but not Yoruba because if you know Yoruba extends even the Gar of Ghana, Yoruba, it's, it's kind of part of Yoruba, but not, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get any um, pushback from the Gar people about their Yoruba heritage. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so interesting enough, uh, Togo, um, is very open. Uh, people practice their belief systems openly, mm -hmm. and the Togo government is is um, is open, and there it's not um, demonized. It's it's just you know one of the just as it, Haitian Voodoo is is one of the religions of of Haiti. I, I always reluctant to use the word religion anyway, but. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I want to clarify that. So Togo um, is one country that um, I would say is is similar in it to to Haiti in in its open practice of voodoo. And to say how open voodoo is practiced in Haiti is is debatable anyway. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but within um, in Nigeria. It is, it's not like that at all. Mm. And as far as I know, and I, I can't really speak for other African countries because I'm not familiar um, with any, but I know that um, in Nigeria, it's, Yoruba is very strong mm. um, because historically the Yoruba Empire 
oil and if they were were very large empires they were very influential um, and sheer numbers of, of, of people and the fact that it you know extended up to the borders of what is now Benin and the Homi and actually beyond and also north of, of, of the Niger so to speak um, in other areas it's difficult to say but to use the kind of expression where people say you know um, Haiti is 70 or 80 percent Catholic and 10 20 percent um, Protestant and 100 percent voodoo then I would say that Nigeria is really that much different in a sense um, but in terms of openly practicing indigenous belief systems um, as I said they it's it's becoming more and more difficult because the the evangelical Pentecostal churches are huge and very 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 powerful um, indeed so in order to be an out practic practitioner of Yoruba or um, any other um, belief, ethnic belief system is very very difficult and there is also the 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 whole demonizing demonization of children as witches which goes on in certain parts of the country um, so that makes it even more difficult to be um, to be out and it's only the few communities I think within Yoruba that are able to to still assert themselves by sheer numbers and by sheer you know just holding on to their their culture mm -hmm. so I can't really speak to the rest of the, the continent that's and and I know that you know in parts of what is now Benin um, indigenous belief system is practiced in, in, in various places mm -hmm. um, the response of the government and people in general I, I cannot speak to that and, and what about in terms of books publishing sacred literature of the Yoruba um, people I mean they, I, I th they have some th stuff right yeah they do and I think the thing is with Yoruba is that it's 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 also very much practiced you know in in, in the diaspora mm. you know I mean in Brazil uh, mm -hmm. in in Cuba and Santeria and I'm sure in other in other um, parts of Latin America um, I, I can't say specifically but in other parts of so Yoruba and I think Yoruba has traveled and what what I have tried to do um, with a colleague um, in in um, in Nigeria in Ibadan at the university is to try for my this is really for my own self I mean it's a very personal thing so what I try to do is through some language and through geog geographies and crossings is try to determine the the influence and the actual part of Haitian voodoo that can draw on Yoruba tradition because mm -hmm. obviously it, Haitian voodoo draws on tradition from lots of different I mean predominantly I would say Dahomey, Yoruba, Congo, Igbo so I'm only looking at it in terms of where it can reach um, out to Yoruba okay. because I not Yoruba myself but First of all, that's where I grew up, but also that's where my, uh, I just, um, when I came to this in Haiti, then I contacted a friend of mine that I know who, who has connections with the Yoruba uh, tradition. So it's between the two of us, we, we've tried to sort of make connections through language and so on, yes. and, and places, and try to determine um, where some at least some of the enslaved um, people that were taken to Haiti whereabouts in Yoruba land they came from and why they came from that area mm -hmm. um, in partic that particular area of Yoruba mm -hmm. and um, it's in early days and, and the difficulties we both have is that we don't have the resources to, to, to um, research in depth or even to have access to text um, but there are, there is more text on on, on the Yoruba um, religion 
than any other that I know, say for example, Igbo, okay. uh, and so on. So that's very, that is very strong. So that kind of helpful because within Yoruba and then Haitian voodoo, you, you, and I haven't even looked at Santeria, and I, I don't think, you know, I, I can't because I'm just, there's so much already between the two. Mm. But I'm also looking at it because what the importance of it for me personally is that, you know, it's funny because through being in, in Haiti and beginning to understand and, and understand voodoo, it kind of takes me all the way back home again. Mm -hmm. So that's what's quite interesting, you know, to me because I, I kind of look at home, I'm speaking, saying Nigeria, and I don't even look at Nigeria as Nigeria because that in itself is a construct. Right. Um, so I'm looking at particular, um, a particular time and a particular space and a particular way of living within what is now this geographical space called Nigeria. So mm. it's kind of like taking me, um, um, you know, I've come to Haiti and I've kind of gone back across the Atlantic. Mm. You know, and I often like look at the map and I kind of look and see, well, how did people come from, maybe they came from the Niger Delta. Because interestingly enough, the Niger Delta um, was one of the first places that the Portuguese um, traders um, went to um, before they started trading in slaves they were trading in in other goods mm -hmm. and the what is now Guinea or the uh, right of uh, um, Guinea is was was one of those places where a lot of um, the slave trade took place mm -hmm. so it was all along that coast from mm -hmm. what is now um, say for example Port Harcourt all the way, you know, through to um, Dahomey, Senegal, Ghana, and, and so on, up to the Gambia, the whole western um, coast. So that in itself is quite interesting um, that you have even, you know, um, the idea of Voodoo Guinea, and then you have this place called Guinea, and you, you, you know, you, you have this water and and so on and the the people of uh, Calabari people are people that you know it's made of a small islands it's it's swamp it's rivers it's creeks um the spirits are mermaids and and water people mm -hmm. so you have all of that and that's kind of so i i i guess i just make these connections in those kinds of ways which i wasn't making well i wasn't really thinking about it you know, so in terms of my own work, like as a as an activist, it and in a person like who thinks in terms of struggle and resistance, it it really kind of makes sense. Um, this kind of circular journey mm. backwards and forwards. So it also allows me to move out of the the constraints of. Of borders and mm, mm -hmm. um, limitations which capitalism and globalization p force upon us so that we become these kind of cultural nationalist people mm. you know waving yes. flags and everything mm -hmm. and I, I think that in itself is detrimental to to a, a certain way of life mm -hmm. that is um, that is a is, is a a decol it's a kind of a way of re it's it's a way of life of resistance really mm -hmm. i mean i think that there's the fact that vo haitian voodoo has reached the point it is today is is a huge um it's it's a huge movement of survival and resistance mm -hmm. against all odds mm -hmm. and those odds i think have been webs you know that at times they have been stronger and, and at times they had been weaker. Mm -hmm. And I think at this moment, in the last maybe five years, 10 years, even since the earthquake, they had the, those, um, that struggle has been more difficult um, mm -hmm. for, for, for Haiti. I think it's, yeah. 
Well, indeed, uh, the uh, Protestants have used the earthquake against Vaudouists. Uh, so that I think that has hurt uh, Vaudou, and there has been something of an exodus to Protestantism, but also Islam in Haiti to a much smaller extent. Uh, now, are you familiar with the, like the Nago rite in Vodou? So Vodou has a Nago rite and you know multiple rites: Congo, Petou Congo, and Ibo also, and Lada, and Dahomey, and so on. So Nago is, uh, according to experts in in African uh, religion and in Yoruba religion, apparently the Haitian translation uh, of Yoruba traditions. So. You know, with spirits like Ogu being the main spirit of the Nagu rite. In fact, there's a, several varieties or manifestations of Ogu mm -hmm. within that rite. Can can you say a little bit about Ogu? I mean, he, he's such a big deal in mm -hmm. Haitian Vodou. He's one of the most beloved and called upon spirits. Mm -hmm. he, he he seems to be a warrior, a general, a fighter. You know, he presents a sword. He smokes a cigar. He seems to drink rum without having any impact on his uh, sobriety. W who is Ogu from a Yoruba point of view? Does he survive? Is he present in Yoruba religion? I, I would assume he is. You know, like Shango is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. He's very. I, he's yeah. I, I agree with you on everything you say. He is an, a Nago in, in is in fact uh, derived from a Yoruba from the Yoruba language, okay. which. <sighs> The Yoruba language, as I understand it, is 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 um, it's. I mean, there is there is Yoruba language, but it's there. There are a lot of dialects, and sometimes the dialects are, are quite different. Um, but it's still uh, Yoruba, and as I said before, the empire of Ife and Oyo. I mean, they are massive empires, even mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. um, 12th, 13th century, I mean, they were really massive, and as I understand it, even occupied what is the Benin Empire as well. Mm -hmm. It was also occupied by the Yoruba. So within that, and you have uh, Ogu, um, who is um, revered and very powerful. And, and, and it's interesting that it's Ogu who has been, you know, the kind of dominant Lua that, or spirit that um transcended the ocean so to speak and 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 followed people and became such a, a huge part of Haitian voodoo mm -hmm. and also um Yoruba so that again makes me really think about the the presence of the heritage of Yoruba people um um in Haiti um just even from from that, and also I think the same could be said of Dambala, mm -hmm. who there is a Dambala um, within Yoruba as well. But I know it's kind of the spirit is more associated with the Fon and, and mm -hmm. the Omi, mm. but within Yoruba there is. I mean, I think the the thing is the spirits. You know, the Ogun is not necessarily the Yoruba. There's manifestations of Ogun, as I understand it, in Congo. So it's not, okay. it's not, it, it, you know, it's not something that is that is kind of fixed. Mm. And I think when you look at Lua, whether or Orisha, you have to do so. You do so within a certain rituals and certain rites, but you also do so as you personally see to do so. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. the way I look at it. I mean, whether that's right or wrong, I, I don't even think there is a right or wrong, but that's how I look at it. You take from it what what it is it means to you personally. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and you know, there. I, I did ask uh, my friend, I said, was there any, because in, in, in Nigeria there's Ogun State and there's Ogun, there's a river, Ogun, mm. as well. Mm -hmm. And I did ask him whether there was any connection between Ogun, the spirit, and Ogun River and Ogun State. And he said, well, he didn't think so, but it, you know, it doesn't really make sense that there wouldn't be, mm. but we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something that, you know, mm -hmm. I think 
could warrant further investigation to see if there is that um, um, connection. Mm -hmm. um, and that's within Yoruba. Ogo State is the state next to Lagos State. Okay. Well, I'd yeah. be surprised if there wasn't a connection. Yeah, I mean, just there's Ogo Badagri, for example. Yeah, Ogo Badagri is... It's a town. Badagri is a town, and interestingly about Badagri is, I, I first, when we were kids, we, m my parents used to take us on holiday by car. Um, from Lagos to Accra, and we'd always, we'd always go through Badagri, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so I'd been there even as an adult quite a few times. And mm -hmm. so Badagri is quite interesting because it's a very small town. Mm -hmm. It had um, is famous for the first two-story building in Nigeria, apparently, okay. which is still standing. Mm. Um, that two-story, the first and the second floor. Mm -hmm. It also has a small, um, quote-unquote, slave museum mm -hmm. um, in Badagri. So it was also um, obviously a center for the slave trade. Mm -hmm. Not as big as in Accra, in, um, sorry, in Ghana and Senegal and other places, but nonetheless there is um, a small slave museum there. Mm. So that kind of interested interested me when I found out about Ogun Badagari, especially you know in the context of Laku Bajo, mm. because right. the the servite there told me that um, Bajo Paddy, the founder of the Laku, was Yoruba, mm. and um, they have a story that Bajo's father Azo Azo Paddy, sorry, um, whose tomb. Um, is in Bajo. Um, no, sorry, his tomb was in Bajo, but apparently one day they woke up and it was gone. So, I mean, I don't know. Okay. Uh, it was mm -hmm. gone, so they don't know what happened. But he, um, Bajo was was of Europe. His, his, fa his father was Yoruba. Mm. And I'm not sure about his mother because apparently he also founded Sukri as well, which you know, follows the Congo mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. um, so these, so the, those connections are very strong. And mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so when I found out about Ogun Badagori, particularly um, in the context of Bajo, I was quite interested because, yeah, there is a place called Badagori. Yeah. And it would make sense because it's part of Yoruba land that right. Ogun, the spirit also you know, is connected to that place, right. and um, yeah. I don't yeah. know the the about the the presence of iron and metalwork, but there's a lot of iron and metalwork in Badagri, right. so that's also quite an interesting um, a story as well. Right, and and I would imagine that uh, the expansion of the Yoruba Empire would have required a lot of metal smelting and mm. so to supply the soldiers mm. so there must be this uh, tradition mm. of metal work and Ogu's patronage mm. of metal workers